gotta check this real quick, because, all right, that appears to be working. Hi guys, woo, impromptu, uh, impromptu live tonight. Um, hopefully uh, everyone can see me and everything because we are in the middle of, well, not in the middle, but we just started uh, Mercury Retrograde, which means electronics don't work worth a damn. So hopefully you guys can see me. So yes, welcome to an impromptu live that I decided to do today. Uh, and the reason that I decided to do this is uh, next week is a little busy in my household. Um, my husband has a lot of time off, um, so I won't be able to do the lives uh, because next month I was supposed to be starting the lives again. Um, so there's, there's that. <laughs> I guess that's kind of the announcement, so I figured I would do uh, one today and then a much better planned out one next week, next Wednesday. It's the only day he works, so will be the time that I have to just kind of be free and do the things. <clears throat> so, um, yes, uh, tonight, or, you know, this evening rather, as you can see, it's still light outside because I did this earlier than 8 o'clock. Um, we are going to be finishing up the section that I left uh, us off with. Cinderella has asked for a divorce. Ooh. Um, truthfully, it's the prince's fault, in a sense. So, um, that's fine. <laughs> um, also, I might have another announcement uh, at the end of the live, and I'll probably do um, another shout-out on my actual... Um, on my actual Facebook bit just because I was having some thoughts about my uh, YouTube channel and I want to see kind of what everyone's opinions are on that if anyone has any opinions um, I'd love to hear them so all right my disclaimer I'm going to read the disclaimer first before I jump into this so this is a work of fan fiction using characters from various fairy tale TV and film sources, including the House of Mouse. You'll know the reference immediately when you hear it, trust me. I began writing these shorts in order to preserve the tales that my best friend Shannon and I told each other when we were children and were consistently getting Disney dolls for our birthdays and Christmases. That being said, I claim no ownership of certain plots, characters, or bits of world I am borrowing to tell these stories. The situations cobbled herein are meant to entertain and are not part of any official storyline and you should not ascribe them to the original story or canon. No money is being made here. As previously stated, this is just for fun and I hope you all get as much enjoyment out of me reading this as I have while writing it. Additionally, I'd like to thank the House of Mouse and the cast of several others for providing such a wealthy supply of fairy tale happy endings that I thoroughly enjoy destroying. All right. So here we go. I wish to be divorced. Mutely, Charming took the ring from her and sat down heavily in a chair where he stayed a long while, even after Cinderella had quit the chamber. Neither prince nor princess slept well that evening, and in the morning, Charming rose and went to consult with his father and mother. The king and queen were in their room, partaking in a splendid breakfast of poached quail eggs, black bread, and piping hot porridge. They looked up as their son entered, and immediately Queen Marie could sense that something was amiss. The king commanded his son to be seated, and asked why he had barged into their chamber at such an hour. Taking a deep breath, Charming revealed everything, every shameful detail he could recall that had happened to him over the past few months. When he had finished, he produced Cinderella's wedding band from his pocket and told his parents about her wish to be divorced. During his recitation, the queen had gone very pale, and when Charming showed them the ring, she couldn't help the involuntary gasp that escaped her lips. 
The king, on the other hand, had gone as still as a marble statue. He stared at the ring in his son's hand, and something akin to panic began to fill his brain. Divorce meant no children, no children meant no heir. No heir could spell doom for his kingdom. The thought was enough to propel him to his feet, and he began to pace the room, mumbling all the while about how to keep this from happening. The queen stared at him, indignant. Surely he wasn't thinking of trying to force the princess to stay wed when she had clearly expressed and asked to be set free. The king replied that that's exactly what he planned to do. He was the king, after all. His word was law. With that proclamation, the queen rose from her chair and glared at him with eyes that had gone as cold as ice. She informed her husband that should he attempt such a thing, he should prepare for a civil war under his own roof, for she would never allow him to bully the princess to stay where she was unhappy. The king spluttered in displeasure, but Charming had decided that enough was enough. Raising his own voice, he demanded that their majesties cease this bickering at once. There would be no need for family disputes, as his mind was made up. If Cinderella wished to annul their marriage, he would not stand in the way of such a request. He had made this mess, and he would deal with it. And with that, the prince exited the room, leaving the startled king and queen to themselves. Later that day, Charming met with his father's counselors, and a paper was drawn up detailing the terms of the separation of the prince and princess. The old delegates shook their heads disapprovingly, and more than once one or two tried to dissuade his royal person from going through with this tragedy. But Charming remained unmoved. With a heavy heart, the prince signed the document and handed it off to a servant to be delivered to the princess. Some time later, the servant returned with the paper completed, and the whole affair was finished, as if neither had ever known one another. Before departing, the servant handed his highness a letter penned in Cinderella's delicate handwriting. Inside the correspondence, the former princess thanked him for always being so kind to her. The time they spent as husband and wife would be a memory she would cherish for all time. Instead of half the kingdom he had so graciously offered her in their divorce contract, she opted instead to take with her one small chest of gold and the clothes she had come to the castle with. She had always been a simple girl, after all, and the burden of a kingdom was not a responsibility she wished to undertake. That was his lookout. The letter ended with a fond farewell, and even after Charming had concluded the correspondence, he sat rereading it several times until he could no longer bear it. For inside his mind, a tiny flame of rage against the one who had caused all this misery had begun to take shape. Tara Lynn. Her name echoed in his head like a bolt of lightning. He would go to the Ash Tree pub and seek out the witch who had enchanted him, and when he found her, he would have her executed for crimes against the crown. Resolved in his cause, Charming made his way to the stables, where he ordered a horse to be made ready to ride, and was off like a shot as soon as the reins were in his hands. The city of Mosbury was oddly still as the prince rode through its gates and made his way to the pub, but he hardly noticed. So determined was he on his quest. Inside the ash tree, Charming searched the patrons for a familiar coil of long, dark hair, but could find nothing. He even went so far to ask the barman, who he knew had seen him with Terralyn many times but he only blinked in confusion at the prince and said he didn't remember seeing any such lady with his lordship. But if he was looking for some female companionship, he would gladly fetch his daughter or any other lady his highness wished. 
frustrated, Charming turned away, and his eyes roamed upwards to the lofts above. Perhaps she was waiting for him in their usual room? That usual room? His heart raced as he mounted the stairs, and he couldn't help but hesitate at the door, his hand poised somewhat shakily on the knob before he roughly shoved it open. Inside, the room was dark, save for one small candle that burned on the bedside table and a figure that stood next to the window, a girl with a fall of dark hair. His breath caught, and the sound caused her to turn around slowly. Charming was annoyed to see that she was smiling. She greeted him politely and asked if he had come to bed her once again before she took leave of the city. The prince was stunned by her candor and replied that no, he was not here to partake of her body. In fact, the idea repulsed him to his very core. He was here to make her answer for her crimes of witchcraft. She would be going nowhere. Terilyn threw back her head and laughed a sound that was both beautiful and horrible at the same time. When she had ceased, the look she gave the prince was amused as she told him that her crimes, as he so aptly put them, were nothing compared to his family's. Again, Charming was baffled by her response and demanded to know what she meant by this insult. Terilyn's look changed from one of mirth to something entirely different something more terrifying and sinister. She berated him, calling him a fool and a slow-witted elf. He was not here on some noble quest to stamp out her magics, but rather to absolve himself of blame. She informed him that she was well aware that his pretty little wife had abandoned him this very day, and he was merely seeking her out to enact some petty revenge. But it was her revenge he should be concerning himself with. This had been her plan all along. And if she had known how easy it was to seduce him, perhaps her mother's curse would never have been necessary. At this revelation, the prince felt his mouth go painfully dry as he choked out, what curse? Terilyn smirked. The curse my mother laid upon your father the day he refused to take her as his wife. Charming recoiled from her in horror and could only stammer out that she was nothing but a whore and a liar. A strange red light came into Terilyn's eyes and her full lips parted in a ferocious sneer. Rave all you want, O oh prince, for it matters not to me. I have accomplished what I have set out to do, and nothing more. But before I go, know this. The curse my mother laid upon your father's head will never leave you, not until you can find another whose equal matches your own. Your lust will burn and sizzle and writhe, but it will never be satisfied. And when I am gone, you will be all alone and no memory of what has transpired here will be recalled or identified. The words rang in his head over and over again, like the tolling of an incessant bell. The prince shut his eyes and clasped his hands over his ears and tried to shut out the sound, but it seemed to go on and on. By the time it finally stopped, Charming opened his eyes, and he was alone. Tara Lynn, along with all memories of her, gone. And that is where I'm stopping. <laughs> Finish of that very long chapter. So as always, if anyone has any questions, comments, night remarks, uh, you can always pop them up in the chat here. Or you can send them in when the live is concluded. I'm still very active on my art page, even during my breaks. And I will answer any and all questions. 
And if anyone still wants to purchase a copy of my book, Lamentations of the Wood, I have one copy left. Uh, they are $15 each, and uh, you can send me a message either here or on my normal Facebook page if we are friends for real. And uh, we can do the transaction through PayPal, and I will send it out to you. So, um, other than that, uh, the last conclusion that I had for uh, this live was uh, about my YouTube channel. So, I kind of started a podcast, kind of, sort of. It's not very, it's one of those things where I start a project and then I immediately just get distracted and do something else. And I swear I don't mean to be like that, but that's just the way it is for me. Um, however, I was thinking that uh, a lot of the readings that I have done over there are more stuff that you listen to instead of watch. So I might be taking the audio and putting it on this podcast instead. Um, and I have the links for that, and I'll probably make a, uh, a link for it on my link T so you can access it a lot easier. I apologize to people that have already subscribed to my YouTube channel already. I know this is another platform for you to, like, go on and do the things, but at least here you don't actually have to subscribe. You just have to hang out and listen. Um, and you don't even have to... A lot of people, I guess, do it uh, through Spotify, uh, but I found that Google Podcasts is the way easier way to do it. We all have a Google account. We all have a Gmail well, I shouldn't say all of us, but a good majority of us have that. So you can just access the podcast through there. It's just easier than creating the Spotify account. Unless, of course, you already have one of those. Then it's a lot easier. The podcast is called Peeps, and I was using it to vent about random shit. Um, um, and I still will be using it for that, most definitely. But I, I might put the readings up with it. Um especially because this next month of lives is going to be uh, a little difficult. I did not get as much written this month as I wanted to, mostly because the section that I had to write was for, uh, spoiler alert, um, was for Pocahontas. And I didn't want to do the thing that Disney did, where it just sort of barely did any research on the culture and, you know, the the people that the Powhatan tribe actually were. Um, so I had to do a lot of research in order to write this section. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Respectfully. So that took a really long time, and the section isn't even that big, but the amount of, like, having to go and check my facts and figures, resources, all all that stuff, that took up a good majority of my time. And I, I don't regret it. I don't regret doing it because it's worth it to tell indigenous folks' stories correctly. Um, but it just really slowed me down. So I don't have as much going for this uh, upcoming month as I would like to have. Um, I have some other stories that are sort of waiting in the wings. They were going to be stuff that I read on my YouTube channel, um, but I might switch it to here instead because it is a lot easier for me to schedule a live, get on here, actually do the things instead of recording the things, putting background music to it, although I love all that stuff because it's very atmospheric, it's very theatrical, and if I screw up, I can, you know, go back and redo the section and make it all sound pretty and perfect, but it is a lot easier for me to be performative here on the live. So I kind of wanted everyone to know what you thought about that. Um, and if you are, if you don't mind the idea of me taking um, the stuff that I've already written on my YouTube channel and putting it to the podcast instead, um, let me know what you think. And if you think that that's a good idea, because I'm, I'm, I'm strongly leaning towards doing it. And then I will probably make some sort of an announcement on my YouTube saying that that, um, that section is probably going to be closed. I will keep a few up uh, that are visually stunning and all that, all that jazz and stuff like that. But I, I think I do want to switch over. But let me know. 
um, what you guys think about me doing that because I know it's another platform, it's another jump, and I should just really stay consistent because that's a lot easier, but YouTube is a visual medium, and what I do is verbal, and that's a lot different than this, well, than that, so. That was all I had for tonight, guys, so hopefully, hopefully this all recorded, um, uh, because retrograde, uh, but yes, I will see you guys next Wednesday um, for the section that I have written. Uh, we'll be getting into the Pocahontas section of the story, and I hope I did it well and correctly. That's all I have for this evening. Um, I'll see you next week, guys.